The war for Cybertron Siege Trilogy was a line that was frustratingly close to all we could ever want with an absolute explosion of G1 fan service and fantastic weaponizing stupidity, but there were a fair share of components that went completely off the rails and missed the mark. One such figure was the Cybertronian Datsun Brothers mold. One was a bullshit exclusive scalpers bought out faster than I dive out on a freshly released Ultra Magnus or fresh new bot posting meme. One is a shelf warming piece of crap in my Walmart that has a case of limp dick knee syndrome. And one was a pain in the ass soul to get selects figure. See, I don't swear in every sentence I say. All of them suffered from some of the most fragile and pathetic looking legs I've ever seen. These legs were more empty than my sense of humor and promises to fix my lighting issue that's been here for over a year. But let's not talk about that. Instead, let's take a look at Smokescreen's Chad updated Earth mode. This skinny red, white, and blue crimson chin cosplayer with an alt mode transforms into a Datsun Fair Lady Z with additional curvature to avoid getting copyright slammed with a copyright lawsuit harder than I want you to smash that like button. But in all honesty, this car mode freaking slaps. It's a bit on the small side, but you know me, paint it red, white, and blue, never show him in any televised media, except for that one time where you nearly, nearly replaced Optimus Prime, take my goddamn money and call me a simp. From the amazing shades of red, white, and blue along with the glossy finish, you can tell this is a strictly no BS car. The Autobot logo is painted insanely well and the back of the car has incredible sculpted details despite this car's smooth and sleek nature. Can we take a second to talk about sculpted door handles? Where has this level of external detail been my whole life? Probably got stolen from the paint budget on the ass end of the car which are never ever painted in anything ever. The headlights are painted in a black color, unlike the packaging, which had them clear, but whatever moistens your cereal, I guess, am I right? Being a car and a transformer, you wouldn't expect it to actually do the thing it's supposed to do and roll smoothly, but this guy rolls like a Hot Wheels car, and probably has about the same material density. You can definitely supersonic race this guy down your bedroom floor, or if you're desperate for a joke like me, drive it straight into a wall. Which is why, of course, they had to do something stupid by pinning the wheels on and leaving the pegs completely exposed. This looks more undesigned and half-assed than the last night. But if there's one thing that amazes me, it's the amount of robot compressed into this car. This thing is really small for a deluxe car and can fit inside of Optimus Prime's trailer. But through the power of mass shifting and engineering witchcraft and or bullshittery, he manages to explode into what we call a deluxe in 2020. Anyways, let's take a look at that transformation. Cue that royalty-free music and don't copyright claim me, you fuck. Much like Octobotomus looks like a poor man's Ricky Berwick, this figure looks like an explosion of experience. Are you sick of that joke yet? The feedy pegs fold out to become heel spurs, which make jack shit of a difference, but hey, a weapon for a day keeps the anxiety from going away. This thing is a direct retool of the Siege version, but much better. The legs are way more fleshed out because now, unlike Siege, they're a three-dimensional shape. But once you pan up on this figure's red, white, and blue awesomeness, it's hard to find a lot of differences between the silhouette of this and the masterpiece, minus the completely empty-ass legs in the back. The only issue is, is a yellow bit of paint that got splattered in into his eye because I got this thing from a scalper in Singapore. The hood of the car protrudes out a bit more to give him a cup size larger on his car tits, but the headlights exist on this one unlike Siege, so you got that going on for you, I guess. Instead of screaming double 38 on the sides, this guy has an 80 printed on the side. I'm sure there's some dark web nerd shit meaning to this that I won't bother looking up because what on earth is research? This head sculpt fortunately doesn't have 50% chin syndrome, which I'm much more fond of than the doofy looking new masterpiece head sculpt. Did somebody say stolen T fan page segue? It's early crash <laughs> The head rotates, the shoulders rotate and move out, bicep bend in rotation, wrist rotation, waist rotation, universal hips, ludicrous knee bend, and foot tilt. Why can this guy pose like such a chag? 
This is a frantically dynamic robot mode and one of the only core formers I recommend getting a flight stand for besides tracks. The joints are a little inconsistent on the other hand. The shoulders on mine are too tight and don't tab in all the way to the sides of the thing and the torso comes too loose sometimes. The legs are more hollow than my promise to read my scripts one more time, but everything improves when you get yourself a cog into the mix. The back of the legs are hollow, but not ass this time, and they have a reason to be. This core mode is, is extremely compact in proportion to the dimensions of the robot mode. Much like anything out of Transformers Prime, this thing made mass shifting into a reality. This thing has absolutely no kibble hanging off of it, and it also comes with a rocket launcher as well as his little pea shooter. These are blast effect compatible because no shit they are. And that is awesome for animation. Earthrise Smokescreen is a classic example of how to do retooling the correct way. This is a big improvement over the Siege version and actually manages to be taller in the process. That or his legs just don't have the proportions of Flat Stanley. If you find this chat at retail, purchase the crap that crap after him. After all, it's not like Haswell do anything stupid to make Prowl more difficult to get or anything, right? Shit.